I want to explain a little bit about ear protection and in-ear monitoring because that's something I get asked about a lot. Basically, when I'm on a gig, I cannot play the drums even on their own without some kind of hearing protection and I don't think anybody should. Your ears are very, very valuable as a musician and I know so many musicians who have tinnitus and hearing problems because they've been exposed to loud noises. And basically, if I hit this cymbal, you know, with a medium velocity, it's loud enough to damage my hearing. So I always wear earplugs. Now when I started off, that would be foam earplugs that cost £2.50 from Boots. And they saved my ears, but it made playing the drums much less enjoyable because they cut off all of the high-end frequency, so I'd hit a cymbal and I would barely hear it. Um, then I moved on and got some custom fitted earplugs that were supposedly an equal attenuation across all frequencies, but even the best of those cut off more of the high end than the rest of the frequencies. And so even with my custom made earplugs in, when I'm playing the cymbals, I don't hear that attack in the crisp highs that I get when I don't have them in. And so it's less enjoyable playing with earplugs than it is without. On a gig, I like to have a click going into my ears and I also like to dial in some of the bass guitar and some of the kick drum and sometimes I'll have the whole band on a mixer and I can you know, do the, my own mix and I can add reverb to the drums and I can make them sound exactly how I want. And that's what I've been doing for the last few years. Now I posted a video recently where I was raving about the Shure in-ear monitors that I bought and they are a great product but there's one drawback with them. And the drawback is this, the minute that you put in-ear monitors in that cut out the outside world, you lose the outside world. So what I mean by that is, I had the Shures in on a gig, and the first gig on the tour, I had overheads on the cymbals and I had close mics on the drums, and we played the show, and it was very weird for me because all I was hearing of the drums was the mix, so I was only hearing the drums as if I was listening through all of these microphones. So I lost the airy ambience that I was used to having with my previous in-ears, which didn't have as good a seal as these. So I realized that a lot of the sound I was getting with my previous in-ears was actually leaking in. So I was hearing as if I almost didn't have them in. They were reducing the volume a bit. And then I was hearing what I was pumping through those at quite a high volume to overcome um, what they cut out. And so I did have a bit of ambience. And with the Shures, they really provided a good seal. They gave me a good low end, but then I was hearing the drums through the mics. So in order to get the ambience back that I missed, I put a mic up above my head and dialed that into the mix. So at that point, I kind of had a sound like I used to have, you know? So I was dialing in a degree of the drum kit as I would normally hear it but it was in mono because I had one mic and of course I could put two mics up, but also those mics are fixed. So if I move my head, the sound doesn't move. So I had a gig in New York and I was talking to Jonathan Mover about this problem. And he said I should check out Sensophonics and their 3D ambient system. He told me that Dennis Chambers had it and loved it. He had it himself and loved it. Uh, Gavin Harrison had tried it and ended up with everybody in Porcupine Tree using these things. And so, you know, he was really selling me on it. And I'd actually at this point talked myself out of getting custom molded in-ears because of the problems I'd had with my previous ones. Mover said to me, these Sensophonics have microphones in the earpieces that go in your ears. And basically you just dial in what you would normally hear. I got the opportunity to meet Michael Santucci of Sensophonics and he brought to a gig um, a, some kind of general fit examples that they used so that people can test it out. And basically this was just a regular earplug that went in my ear and had the speakers and the microphones in it, but it stuck out quite a way. And they don't make those as a product, but they allowed me to test this ambient system. Um, and actually, on that gig, I got a really good taste out of all the different variations because what happened was um, there's a belt pack. So I had the belt pack clipped on my pocket and the, the pants I was wearing were kind of flimsy. And in the middle of the first song, the belt pack fell off and pulled the earphones out of my ears. And so 
I got the opportunity of in a single song hearing what it was like to play with it with the in ears in and with them out. And when they fell out, it was loud. I, I didn't realize how loud it was, but they fell out and I was in pain and I was trying to get these things back in my ears. So that answered the question of whether or not I really needed them. Yes, I do. I do not want to play a gig without hearing protection. Um, so I therefore need some kind of in-ear monitoring system rather than earplugs because earplugs cut out too much of the high end and I can't feed a click track into there. And I want the ambience. So this thing had the ambience setting. So I um, dialed in some ambience, I'm, I'm playing the second set. On the second song, once I'd got them back in, I realized that the line input jack had come out and all I had going through there was the bass drum. I usually like to feed a little bit of bass drum into my ears, if nothing else, because that's the thing that I tend to lose most. And for the whole second song, that wasn't there. And I almost didn't realize because the reason that I don't hear the bass drum so well with the in-ears in is that they cut out a lot of the high end. Even with earplugs, it's the high end of the bass drum that lets you hear where the attack is. And with this system, I didn't really notice that it wasn't there. And then I plugged it back in on the third song and it came back and it was better, but I hadn't missed it as much as I normally would. And then finally, between the sets, I was talking to the band backstage and I had it in what's called full ambient mode. You flick a switch and you hear as if you didn't have them in so you can have normal conversations and things. Um, so if you're in a rehearsal session and then you stop and somebody wants to talk about what you've just played, you flick it onto this mode and it's like you've taken them out of your ears. So I kind of forgot that I had them in and went back to start the second song and played the toms to start off this song. And again, it was blisteringly loud and I quickly flicked it and went back into the normal mode. So that kind of proved to me how well the full ambient mode worked. So after that, I decided to splash the cash and they are expensive but they're custom made very high quality product and for me it was worth it because I do so many gigs and I want this ideal situation of basically being able to turn down the world and not have the sound change and then add in the other things that I want. Here is the box that the things came in so you get a nice big protective case and you have a belt pack and the in-ear molded earphones um, the cables are detachable so if something goes wrong with the cable which is usually the the first point uh, the first thing that goes on in-ear monitors you can just replace the cable so all the electronics inside the earbuds and basically they're like any other custom molded in-ears on the back here there's a hole right there, and there's a microphone inside there. And so that's what is taking the outside world and feeding it into your ears. Now, in the belt pack, you've basically got some switches on the top. You've got power on and off. You've got some LEDs that show you the monitor level of the input that you're sending into it, and the ambient level, what's being picked up by the in-ears. And then you have this switch, which is what switches it from full ambient mode. And that's when you're basically, you have this dialed up to the volume that sounds like you don't have them in at all. And then performance mode. In performance mode, the volume of the outside world you hear is dictated by this little volume control in here. So when it's up all the way full, that's like full ambience mode and you're hearing, um, you know, the same volume that you would without them in. And then if you switch it all the way down, then it's off and so you're not hearing any of the ambience and then it's like regular in-ear monitors. And then finally you've got two little jumper switches that switch from single to dual driver mode and they make single and dual driver models so um, that's basically uh, to decide which version you've got and there's a limiter switch so that you can protect your hearing. Uh, if you've got the limiter on it won't go loud enough to damage your hearing. And finally this particular version on the side you've got uh, this is the line input, so you would plug the output from your mixer or from the front of house into this. And there's another version you can get that has a volume control on the top and comes with a cable that you would plug XLRs or whatever into. And then you've got volume control of the line input. But I personally always have a mixer down by my side that has the volume control on and I that's where I control the volume. And on the side here, I've got an additional option which is record out. So I can actually 
plug a mini jack into the send um, socket here and record what the earphones are picking up. So I can record a stereo signal, which is um, what I hear as a drummer. So I might do a video at some point with um, a video camera on my head and these things on my ears and you'll be able to see and hear what it sounds like from my perspective. So that's it, this is, this is what I got. I've used it on uh, three gigs without my mixer, um, basically just like variable volume earplugs and I was very happy with it. Um, I've been using it for practice and it's great for practice, I, I love it. One nice thing about the variable attenuation is that you can use it on a jazz gig and just turn the volume down a little bit and you know, it's just a little bit more pleasant to play that way. If you're on a rock gig, you can turn the volume down more. And like I say, your drum kit sounds like your drum kit does with no ear protection and you're just changing the volume of it. And it's quite incredible how well it works. Um, it surprises me every time I put them in. So if you want to get some of these, um, and like I say, I, I think it's the final solution for me. Um, it answers all of the problems that I had with in-ear monitoring. Uh, it does everything that I need. So if you want to get yourself some, head to sensorphonics.com. And if you want to know a little bit more about um, the process of getting them made, then keep watching. Okay, when I first got some custom molded in-ears, I didn't know where to go to get it done. I didn't know what the process was. I, I was, you know, and that, that kind of put me off. So I want to share with you the experience of doing this. Um, it's quite simple once you know. The people who take molds are audiologists and they usually deal with people who need hearing aids and that kind of thing. So uh, in England, you can find them in some boots opticians. Um, on the Sensophonics website, they have some recommended audiologists in various places. Um, but basically you just need to find somebody who can make hearing aids for people and they will take impressions of your ears and it costs maybe 25 pounds or something like that in england you can get some impressions made what they do is they look in your ears and check that they're clean and if they're not they might send you away to get your ears syringed or they might be able to clean your ears a little bit um, when your ears are clean they take a little bit of foam on a piece of string and they put that into your ear to protect your eardrum and, and stop the, um, the kind of silly putty stuff that they're about to put in. So once that's in there, they mix up uh, this silly putty stuff, put it in a little syringe and inject it into your ear, not sticking a needle in you, but you know, just squeezing the stuff into your ear canal. And it fills it up, it's quite pleasant in a way. Um, basically, it just sounds like you're putting your finger in your ear, it blocks out all the outside noise and then that will set in your ear over the course of about five minutes and it will expand to fill all the space in your ear. So one point here is you want to end up with a mold that fits your ear canal no matter what shape it is. And one of my concerns with getting these done was that I'd get the molds done, I'd spend all the money getting the things made and then I'd put them in and I would smile and it would break the seal. And when you break the seal, you lose the low end response. So I talked um, at great length to Michael Santucci of Sensophonics about this and he said the key to getting this to work is you have your mouth slightly open when they put the material in there and then just pull the faces that you would while you're on a gig so I was pulling my ears back and smiling and doing all sorts of things and talking um, and because this material expands while it sets you know if your ear canal kind of opens up a bit at some point then the material is going to go and fill that space and when it changes again, you know, it's still, it's just a little bit more pressure there. And that's what I did while the molds were being taken. I just talked and moved my face around and these things fit great. And once they're in there, I can move my face around and I don't lose the seal. So this is what 
you end up with. That's a mold, an impression of the inside of my ear. And the audiologist will send this to um, Sensophonics, or they'll give it to you and you will send it to Sensophonics. And Sensophonics then make the in-ear monitors to that shape. And if you get them back and you put them in your ears and they don't fit right, then um, you can send them back and there's a 30 day refit policy and they will, they'll try again until you get it right because they want you to be happy. They don't want you to spend all this money on a product that doesn't fit correctly. So I'm thankful to say that um, I got these through and they fit perfectly straight away. They're a little bit awkward to get in. That takes a bit of practice, but it does come with a, a little booklet showing you how to get them in there. Um, and once they're in, they're very comfortable. Um, you know, I've played two hour shows with them and I barely notice that they're there. Uh, and then that's it. You've got hearing protection. You can dial down the volume of your drums. You've got the perfect solution and um, you'll have them and they'll last you many years.